Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Keith Hudgens. I am a sales and field engineer at Rundeck, and we're here to talk a little bit about how to integrate Rundeck with your CI/CD workflows and uh, ways to make that much, much more accessible for your team, both to manage the application during the deployment and after the deployment. So let's get started through by framing the conversation here. What we're going to do is set the stage. Your boss has decided that, uh, that they want continuous deployment. They know the benefits, they know the risks, and you've got an application that you just want to, you want to do continuous code pushes uh, while your developers are working on it. So your boss has set you up with some requirements. Continuous deployment, make sure that you have full integration testing, use as many of your existing tools as possible, and once the apps are in flight and up and running, you want to be able to easily manage, rollback, do that type of thing. But the challenges are you're deploying on Kubernetes. Most of your teams are not Kubernetes experts, and you need to be able to do this as fast as possible, including rollbacks. So that's kind of the scenario for this particular demo. So these are the tools that your team is currently using. You're deploying on Azure Kubernetes service, codes in GitHub, testings in Jenkins, and you're writing applications in Ruby and Sinatra. So just to set the stage of how we're doing this, how do we channel these things together? Well, let's talk about that. We've got a, we've got a fancy diagram. So we're gonna start with GitHub. Your uh, developers will push to GitHub where uh, you'll set up a post commit hook to, uh, that will tell Jenkins to go ahead and run your build. Inside Jenkins, we have a plugin that is configured to talk to Rundeck. This is a plugin that Rundeck provides that you can use uh, to trigger jobs in Rundeck. And then from Rundeck, we're gonna have a, a couple of jobs. Job in Rundeck is uh, basically the singular component of your automation. Think of it like a script. So in this case, we're gonna call a wrapper job that calls two, in, two jobs internally. And the, those jobs are running sequentially. The first is a build container job, which will build your container. Uh, we're gonna create two tags, one for latest and one with a timestamp. Both of those will be pushed to Docker Hub. And then once that build job is done, then we're gonna run an update deployment job, which just talks to Kubernetes, updates the uh, deployment description. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna send that the current timestamp tag of that particular image to Kubernetes so it will pull and do a rolling restart. So. The question is, what if something breaks? What if there's a problem with the with your rollout procedure? So built in every stage of this particular workflow, circuit breakers are laid in to prevent downstream steps from happening. So if once the auto so the automation starts with the push to GitHub, that post commit hook is gonna happen as soon as you see a push on the main branch in your repository. But once the build starts in Jenkins, Jenkins is not going to call Rundeck unless the build successfully completes. Then the, uh, if the container build fails, Rundeck will not move on to the second step of deploying the application. Once the application deploys, hopefully you've got some testing in your environment to be able to, uh, some live application uh, you know, monitoring to make sure that things are good. And if not, you know, you'll have to get the feedback from, error, uh, from, from users, uh, never something that people want. But if that does happen, if you get to the point to where you deploy code that for whatever reason isn't working, you need a developer who can roll back via the web UI really, really fast and easy. And we'll show you how to do that. So let's take a look at this demo and watch it happen. So what we have here is uh, we're logged into Rundeck in, uh, in this project. And I'm going to go ahead and um, step into the project. All of the, this is all of our automation. We're looking at this kube deployed group of jobs right here, but we're gonna step into the activity screen and set it to auto refresh. That way, any activity in Rundeck, we'll see it as it happens. We've got, this is our build in Jenkins. We're logged into Docker Hub. This is uh, the repository for our, our, uh, for our image. And then finally, this is GitHub. So these are all the parts of our, of our application hooked together. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to go in and update this demonstration here. I was, last time I did this, we were at KubeCon, and I was, and uh, so I added a little hello tag. So we're going to remove that hello tag, and I'm going to do the get dance. And push to get, so and push to GitHub. So now that that is up in GitHub, uh, we're going to just follow this workflow through. So we should, in Jenkins, there we go, 
I know this is small. Um, please maximize your screens. Uh, there's a lot of information that I want you guys to see. So um, our build is running and it should be done any minute now. And it is. So what's going to happen now is we're going to go in and take a look at the build output. And this is just a standard Ruby build. We've got our um, bundle install. And then these are our rake tasks, our, our tests run through rake. These are RSpec tests, so that's a standard RSpec output. This is a very small application. And uh, this application basically does, uh, is a hello world app, but it has a special sauce function in it that I'll show you in just a minute. Um, and then finally, the big thing to, to see is that we're notifying Rundeck. We're sending an execution uh, to, uh, to the job in Rundeck. So we're going to, uh, I'll go ahead and refresh to see the job. We did have a little message, one new, uh, one new result, and that's this deploy wrapper job that we were that we were talking about. So we'll click into that to see what's happening. And uh, and if I go to uh, and if I go to the workflow view, you can see we're going to build the container. We've got a little bit of a sleep to just kind of wait and make sure that GitHub or not, Docker Hub responds with everything, and then finally we have our uh, Kubernetes deployment that updates the application in Kubernetes. So let's go into the job definition real quick. So this is successfully deployed. Uh, we're gonna go to the job definition real quick and uh, take a look at the application itself. And, uh, and we're also gonna take a look at this deployment update. So before we run it, I'm gonna go ahead and edit the job and show you something that we're doing to make this a lot easier. So in the workflow itself, we, we're taking a couple of, we've got a couple of user input fields with some default values. So the first is the, uh, is the path to the Docker image, and the second is the number of replicas that we want on the deployment. This is done because this update job, while it's part of the automated workflow, you can also run this in an ad hoc capacity to scale up or scale down your application in flight, and also to update the image. And this is what we're using to actually manage deployment. The deployment is set to automatically pull uh, new images, and it's also set to uh, to do a rolling update. So if we send a new timestamp, Kubernetes will automatically do a rolling update. There's a special sauce in this configuration here. This right here, this URL, is our application in flight. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and what it looks like. So I also have a special function in here. If you, as you can see, Docker Hub underscore tags as a get request and passing it the image uh, definition. And what that's going to do is return a list, a JSON list of all of the various tags. So what's happening here is that uh, we, we're using this application as a sidecar container to this automation within Kubernetes to feed the list of tags for our deployment so that we have an automated pull down. N normally in production, you wouldn't actually have this in the application you're managing. You'd have a second little helper uh, container running some of these functions. In this case, for the purposes of the demo, we're just rolling it all together. But what we're gonna do is cancel out of this description and run the job so you can see how it works. Well, I hit run job a little bit too soon, but let's go ahead and run again to see what we're talking about. Now, this is our default value, which is gonna to default to latest, but we can roll back going all the way through this list. So if I go to our application here and go to the uh, go to the root path of the application, you'll see run that deployment test app. So the last time I ran this demo, I mentioned we were at, uh, we were at KubeCon. So I'm actually gonna go two builds early. This is the most recent tag. This is the uh, next most recent tag. So this is the last time I ran this. And when we do that, we should now start redeploying this application in Kubernetes and there's our Hello Kube contact. Uh, so we have actually rolled back without having to dive into the application description YAML. You don't have to run uh, you know, Kube Cuddle from a command line. We have a nice, easy management interface for dealing with your application in flight as well uh, using Rundeck. So uh, the advantage here, obviously, uh, you can do your container build in Jenkins. You can actually have a shell script that pushes your image to your uh, container repository, whether it's Docker Hub or something behind your firewall or GitHub or whatever you like. Obviously, all of those are things that you can do outside of Rundeck, but the special thing that what Rundeck allows you to do is chain all these pieces together by, by also enabling uh, your users and your, your application developers 
to have easy access to this functionality without ever having to dive into uh, dive into you know really really complicated YAML descriptions or Helm charts or things like that. All the other beautiful thing that we have in here is that within these uh, within these jobs you have all of the other functionality of run deck. For an example, uh, we have a job here that runs Docker image purge on our local Docker build every 24 hours to make sure that your CICD workflow doesn't fill up the build box. And, uh, and so you can run a bunch of maintenance tasks in here as well. That's our demo. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned a lot. As always, if you have any questions or if you want to see something deeper, you can contact our community team via email, hello at rundeck.com. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.